Hey guys, look at this treasure that I found here on a shelf. You want to talk about a piece of history. Guys, this has got an insufflator. It's got a light source and it has an ESU. And I'm going to show you inside it and pull each one of these out because look, they got little thumb screws. You can pull each component out and you can service it in the field if you need to. But uh, this is Elder Instruments and the ESU is a Martin Electrom 120, 120 watt max. There's some really fascinating things about this device I'm gonna point out to you guys, so let's take a look. All right, guys, first off, let's just go ahead and start with the insufflator. So there is a bottle connection on the back, but take a look at this. It can use carbon dioxide or nitrous oxide, which is fantastic. You can see right here, it's got a low flow or a high flow, and you can see it's got a push button on the front. Tiny little nozzle to the patient. All analog. Everything about this device is extremely analog. Let's see inside it. So way down there in the back, there is a regulator. You can see it down there. That regulates your bottle, bottle incoming pressure. Then you have a high flow and low flow regulator up here that we adjust the outgoing pressure. And we have a reservoir in here. Look at that. It's retained by rubber bands. You can see all the connections behind each one of the gauge sets. Absolutely amazing, guys. Gauges are still in excellent condition. You can see bottle pressure. This one here is your patient pressure. Look at that, 60 millimeters of mercury. You're blowing somebody out at 60 millimeters of mercury. And I assume that that's what one of those lines was on the inside. Probably a safety valve, one of those up there. Yeah, nowadays we try and release pressure at 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury. Average is about 15. Modern day units can run as low as five to 10 millimeters of mercury because the lower the abdominal pressure, the less the amount of trauma to the patient. And down here, you can see your leaders, your leader gauge. Bakelite switches. Everything feels fantastic on it to this day. Absolutely amazing. Little flow gauge. All right, let's take a look at the light source. This is Elder OL 150. Kind of a simple unit. Take a look. Here's a fan, single fan. There's the bulb. And the bulb presses straight down into one of these Bakelite receptacles. Simple status indicators at the top with bulbs that are changeable. And let's see the intensity. Yep, the intensity, this one right here is just a resistor stack. So as you go up, increase the resistance and you adjust your intensity. So there's not a backup bulb, it's actually two bulbs at the same time. See that? So on off, they all activate. Everything still feels fantastic. And this ESU. <laughs> First, let's go over the front. Martin Electrom 120. This guy is fantastic. Look at the connections. Cutting and coag and bipolar coagulation. You see that? Uh, so you can see right here is a tiny little flip switch. Bakelite flip switches. They feel fantastic. They're really tight. Here's the main power on off. When you click these on and off, you can feel the quality of those switches. That's really nice. Uh, right here is your foot control. You can select between fingertip and foot switch with this guy. Unlike modern day ones where it either one will activate. And this right here is a little stubble that went to your patient return plate for your monopolar. So there's 10 positions. Intensity, cutting, and quag. This adjusts your watts. And this one here and just for bipolar, the amount of coag that you'll get. Oh my gosh, hold on. It's kind of heavy. 
All right, mains power comes in in the back. You have a mains fuse right there. You've got two tubes. Check out these tubes. So the tubes actually generate your RF energy. And you can see right here, we've got two different uh, variable uh, transformers. And as you change your taps, it's changing the taps on your transformers, which is adjusting your power output. Very cool. You got two large power transformers and what looks like an activation board, which is basically just your relays that turn it on and off. So cool. Let's get up. Look at the back. So all the solder connections are really nice. These contacts are still fantastic. There's no corrosion. It's been kept in a real good condition. Check that guy out. So that is 120 watts max. One of the earlier models of ESUs. And this guy is probably fully functional. I like that there's these little access panel screws on the front. Definitely a retro thing, but I really wish they kind of built them like this nowadays. Makes it really easy to service. You know, if I didn't have a phone in one hand, I probably would be able to do a better job. But how fascinating is it? They use nitrous oxide for abdominal insuff insufflation, and uh, we got a light source and <laughs> ESU all in one unit. And from what I was told, these things brand new we're selling for about $3,500. So that's an excellent deal. <laughs> Very serviceable. So anyway, guys, you never know what you're gonna run into. And uh, I really like that they kept this. It's a piece of history. And the fact that it's still in fully functioning capabilities. Um, I, I would love to fire it up, but <laughs> a piece of history like this, I'd rather not because take a chance at maybe pop in a capacitor or something. But anyway, it's good to, uh, to pull it out and take a look at what really made them tick back in the day. Thanks for watching, guys.